would have made such a difference if only you'd talked to me. I could have helped you and probably none of this would have happened. Surprisingly, this road is like no other around here. I once heard it referred to as Lonely Lane. The kids from school would come here when they wanted to talk about things. I suppose it's just a childish idea, but it made sense at the time. quite funny really, how busy our lives are, how hectic things get, and we find ourselves eventually slipping away from who we once were, and we never stop to take a moment to, to rediscover ourselves, to look round, to find out who we are and where we are. I'm Jake Foster. If you want to go for another one, then I think I might. I don't, mate. Going on a bit. Oh, come on, let's go and have another drink. No, one more. Will. Sure. Right.
in front of you. I don't want to show nothing in there, One of these rods. Let's go. Right, what's up? Really gotta go. Fine, what, what's wrong? And perhaps I should explain my situation. See, it all started one night with a girl named Scarlett. The night I lost my virginity. She was the girl whose eyes I'd followed for some time, and although they never before fell on me, she was still the girl I cared most for. And one night I'd been lucky enough to make a move. She was gorgeous, way out of my league. She told me her parents were overprotective, and so she'd had to lie when she came out with us. She'd tell her parents she was going shopping or some such story. I don't know why I was so drawn to her. Whenever she was in the room, I could feel myself guided towards her. Fortunately for me, she wasn't just interested in a one night stand. But unfortunately for me, it wasn't me that she was interested in. Stevie was a force of nature, the guy I wanted to be. He was cool confident, friendly, and always had your back. Well, so I thought. We'd been best friends for years, practically inseparable at one stage, and I suppose Scarlet should have been a test to our friendship. One that we took well without much trouble. But eventually, the stress of the situation got too much, and we fell apart. A shame, really. She fell for him, and they got together eventually. And for all my efforts, they left me behind. I was now friendless and heartbroken. I would spend most of my time around Lonely Lane, trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. This would have been a few weeks after the Scarlet and Stevie situation. It was roughly around this time I learned I wasn't the only person who liked to spend time in this area. What I would later learn was that Lonely Lane was an easy spot for a certain individual to find victims. Craig was often in a group, along with two others, Leon and Spad. But the scariest thing about Craig was that he was worse when he was alone. Because as much as Leon and Sped were cruel, I felt they were somehow able to calm Craig. But when they weren't around, I honestly feared for my life. I would often find myself in situations so painful that I would have welcomed death as a way to stop the pain. I'd been beaten, trampled, spat at even stabbed. 
I found myself begging for them to stop, crying for my mum to come and save me. I found myself lying on the floor, bleeding, thinking I would do anything to stop the pain. Now I know what you must be thinking, it's never acceptable to wish upon such things those who have ever been in such pain, they'll understand that there's no explaining the thoughts that can travel through your mind. The scariest feeling is knowing that you know how easy it could be to just end it. People would pass by, doing nothing to help. Bystanders. I would lie there, wishing that they would call my mum, so that she knew where I was. I would cry at night, knowing that my mum would never know how much pain I was in. This brings us back to present day. Morning, Joe. You alright? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have anyone else? Um, I'm just going out. Okay, okay. Have a good day. See you later. Thank you. I often stop to think, would things have been different if I'd never taken Scarlet home that night? I would have still had those feelings, but they might not have hurt as much as the ones I have now. Me and Stevie may have still been friends, but if we couldn't stand the test of time, how long would it be before we fell apart anyway? If we hadn't fallen out, would I have started hanging around Lonely Lane? If not, would I have met Craig, Leon and Spud? <sighs> Maybe this was what was meant to happen. Maybe I was just destined to fall apart this way. It's strange how one single event can have such an effect on the rest of your life. One little thing changed so much. I miss who I used to be. And I wish I had somebody to talk to. It's surprising how much you realise when you're on your own. How all the people you know, who seem so great, seem to be nowhere to be seen when you need them. <laughs> what am I saying? I wouldn't know what to say even if somebody was here. I suppose it would be something like, think before you act. If it was going to be anybody that was here, I wish it would be mum and dad. For them to know how sorry I am. 
for not being as loving as I should have been for closing myself away and not being as present in their lives as I would have liked to be for all the mistakes I made as a child for all the little arguments for making dad angry and mum cry if I could go back and change things I would Even at home I wasn't free from it all. I couldn't sign into my social media or even check my emails for fear that I'd get more abuse. People would add me on Facebook only to send me horrible messages and post about me on public chat rooms. I once had people turn up at my door because somebody had followed me home and posted my address online. The nights spent lay awake dreading the next day where I could be beaten again. Having to come home to tell my mum I fell over and that the bruises were just accidents. The classes at school that I never attended because the person I was sat next to wrote nasty things in my books. The pocket money that mum gave me, even though she probably couldn't afford it being taken from me to avoid being beaten up. How could people treat me this way? Not just me either. I know others who are struggling under the same hardships. What would my mum say? Would she understand? Would my dad tell me to be a man? I feel so guilty every time I think of all the wonderful things my parents did for me. And I hope that they know that no matter what happens, they'll always be the best thing of my life. In hindsight, things probably shouldn't have gone this far. But what else can I do when there seems no end? They couldn't have known. I'm so sorry I wasn't brave enough to tell you. But please don't blame yourself. You did your best. You gave me life. You gave me enough. Please know that I tried. It was all just a little too overwhelming. I'm so sorry that you'll never know what I'm thinking right now. But trust me. For the last time. I'm ready for this. Dear Mom, okay. I'm so sorry, but I just can't take any more. Thank you for everything you have done for me. But I can't go on living this life. I will always love yeah. you and hope you don't think bad of me. I will see you again sometime.
sometimes it just pushes them that far that they can't possibly get back. And they just feel so isolated and so alone. Please, just think about what you're doing, the devastation you're causing and the heartbreak 